Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back again. We're here for the Dream League Season 13 Major. We're taking a look at our game number two for the day in Group D. It is Navi facing off against Team Liquid. I'm Lyrical back again with Mr. Draskal and Andy. They got Disruptor. They let him have it. The game's over now. This is the, uh, if you guys haven't been keeping track of the Group D games, this has been the lose game one, transition into first, pick Disruptor into win. That is basically every single game that we've watched up in, well, not every single game, every single series yeah. that we've watched up to this point. It's uh, actually kind of funny because this, this hero, have, has it lost yet on our stream? Uh, on our stream, I don't think that it has. Uh, in the whole tournament, it has. Um, yeah. I think that it's got one of the higher win, uh, or rather pick ban rates, um, which is, I mean, it's really fun, like, keeping track of all the stuff that's going on. But Disruptor, to me, feels like it's first phase ban material. Uh, but Navi let them have it. Maybe they got a plan. I mean, they certainly had a plan last game, and yes. it completely Navi's crushed. I was really a fan of what Navi were doing draft-wise. They're going to open with the puck yet again. Uh, this time, there's going to be a Doom. Uh, what was their opener last game besides Puck? Because it was second uh, or third overall pick, but it was in the same phase. Well, it was either way. A, a, it was tiny. Okay, yeah. So they had uh, they had the tiny with it instead, but still a strong opening. This time they're going to be picking most likely Pasha's hero, I suppose, instead of whatever um, Zayek is playing. And I like Doom just in general. He's very flexible with his itemization. Obviously, have like the blank drums phase build. You got the aura build. There's you know his his lighting presence is pretty good. Um, Slark's already taken out of the pool, along with Lone Druid and Timber, who I would say are all fairly strong laners uh, against Doom. And now Liquid going for the Earthshaker. Okay. I mean, this is just, it's a lot of team fight. It's catch. It's, you know, lockdown and damage. It's kind of everything you would want uh, from an opener. So I'm, I'm liking uh, Liquid's opener a bit more, Ten I suppose, than last game. Me. And then, you know, now you can pick maybe another hero for uh, quick for like we mentioned at the end of game one, where he can pick some kind of tempo control instead of just playing like a, a second one position. Yeah, I think that that would definitely be nice. Um, and maybe uh, the other idea is, is getting I, I'm wondering if this is going to be a boxy shaker. It's like, I think one of his most iconic hero, but he also often goes for like Aghanim Scepter. Um, which isn't always like a bad thing, but I just remember really clearly like one game where he went ags against a void um, and then he just like couldn't do anything because he kept getting time dilated. Uh, anyways, that's neither here nor there. Um, I think that it fits the, 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 the type of draft there that they want to build right now, regardless of if they run it three or a, a four. Um, but we'll see drought man out now as well for team liquid Navi. Is there anything like the thing that I'm kind of curious about is how do you feel about magical on that puck last game? Because it's a hero that can be played in a lot of different positions. Team he made a lot of space, but there are also a couple of times where he died in sort of weird and bizarre ways. Do you, do you think it's a, a good fit for him playing it again? I don't think it was as strong as showing like individually, but I think because of how good their draft was, it was kind of hard for him to like actually fail. You know what I mean? Okay. Like the, the draft enabled him so much to be able to just play you know, whatever way, I think his itemization was fine. Like he went blink into Lincoln, so he wouldn't just get like insta-killed by the Sand King. Um, and like he, he knew what he had to accomplish in the game, which is really all you can ask for. As long as you know what your job is, which is basically just initiate for your team. And he was doing that, then I think it was fine. But yeah, I, I think his TA, for example, was a, a much stronger showing yesterday. Uh, obviously, they quit at first phase that this game, so they're not going to be able to... Uh, to pick it themselves, but I mean, if their plan is is as good as what as it was in game one, I think it's going to be fine. As yeah. like a, a mid, yeah, that seems fair. Um, and I guess the other thing to consider is that they first phased it last time, so there are a lot of answers that uh, Liquid were able to throw at it. Um, you know, it's weird that you mentioned that because really the only answer they had for it was Sanking. That's true. Yeah. They had the like potential. Boxy just got crushed, you know. Boxy got destroyed by that puck the entire game. I think I saw like two eggs total no, in like a 37 minute game. So it's not as if um, they saw the puck and then said, hey, let's really counter this. Like you mentioned, no, actually, at the beginning of the draft in game one, they don't really prioritize the hero highly at all. And it yeah. kind of owned to them. So, you know, we'll see what happens this game if they make any other um, any adjustments. I wouldn't say that Disruptor is awful against Puck, but it does require a certain, you know, circumstance for you to really be able to reliably static storm him. His phase shift and stuff has to be down. His orb has to be down. Uh, otherwise, you know, he can just phase the glimpse, 
And then later on in the game, there will be Blink Echo, which is technically catch, but that doesn't come online right away. That's one of those things that's going to take some time before, if um, Magical is playing it again, that he really has to worry about it. And Liquid are just picking, like, it's just triple defensive heroes yeah. at the moment. It's like, who can pick the more passive lineup right now uh, from both teams? Because they're in, in last game, Liquid were very scared of committing because they had the double melee core against the the Enigma and the, the Naga Siren. But this time around, they're picking a, a much different approach where these heroes are all very, you know, they don't commit hard except for the Shaker. Everyone else can kind of just, you know, run away. Disruptor likes to sit in the back. PL is very elusive just as a hero in general. I'm not so sure how I feel about this PL pick, though. Like, after looking at the heroes that Navi have, Puck is great lockdown. Kind of forces you to, to stay in the fight. You can't doppelganger. Um, there's a Winter Wyvern as well, Five so if your remain. positioning is not very good, there's two other melee heroes to, to receive a curse that you can just basically, you can kill the Shaker. Yeah. Like, you, you will straight up just kill him if the curse is, is well placed, and then, you know, Lifestealer can just go Mjolnir. He definitely actually wants to build that item nowadays because of the new feast. Right. So I'm, I'm curious. I want to, I want to know what quick this hero is. Because he needs, again, he needs to be that hero that's going to control the map. Because right now, Liquid have four heroes... They have some limited catch with a disruptor, but Shaker doesn't really set up a whole lot of kills against these types of heroes. Like Wyvern's gonna fly over your fissure. Doom's naturally very tanky. Puck has phase shift, and Life Stealer has range. So who are you killing right now? Yeah, totally. It, it doesn't feel like there's really that great hero, and remaining. I think that's why this Life Stealer pick is so good. And maybe I guess the hope that Lick would have is that PL is gonna be a big enough core that he can just deal with that Life Stealer. But I think I've seen time and again Life Stealers go a bunch of different builds that. Uh, can sort of match PL's farm carry for carry, uh, even into the later stages. And the other big thing to me is that it, it does feel like this lineup for Liquid, these supports don't really deal that much damage unless they're like super duper farmed. We have seen a couple farmed disruptors where you get like an Aghanim Scepter or something. But if you just manage to spot the real PL and doom him, um, in the later stages in the mid game, that's going to be a ton of their damage. So, uh, yeah, we're going to need a quick for hero that can do a lot, but also doesn't need a ton of farm to do a lot with it, I guess, is the way that I'm seeing it. Yeah, and there's also a lot of heroes banned, like midwise, that wouldn't be too bad this game. Like, it would have been actually a pretty okay timber game just because you do have that ABBA, so you like shield your timber and he's basically unkillable. Oh. Um, but you won't have access to that, so what's it gonna be? All right, the Dizzler. That's uh, it's Did you obviously just call him the game. Dizzler, yeah, the Outworld Dizzler. Uh, I, it's okay, like I'm looking at their, their overall lineup though, and I'm going, your playmaking is still relatively limited. Uh, and I'm really scared that if they lose their lanes, that they're gonna pretty much fall into the same thing they did in game one, where they're not going to feel really confident about walking into anyone. Because it's two really strong cores um, that are going to be frontlining at this point. Well, actually, we don't know for sure if Doom is going to be three, but I'm kind of just assuming. Because um, they need a mid hero, right? On the side of Navi, unless Crystallize is playing Puck again. Right. But we'll see. Uh, magical playing Puck. Sorry, yeah. Magical. Yeah. yeah um... Jeez, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you just try and go like for an all in type of strat and just end the game. Because until like Earthshaker gets a Blink Dagger, I don't see how you you do anything with this Team Liquid team. I don't I don't know. Like PL just wants to farm OD. Maybe he can do some stuff, but it's not like he's early catch. It's, ugh, it just doesn't seem that great. I don't know, man. Andy, I'm worried for Team Liquid here. I feel like Navi have this in the bag and I haven't even seen the fifth pick yet. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to completely discount them because these are the types of games where you can overcome, like, your lineup adversity through just good teamwork and coordination. Like, okay. I've seen it a million times. Um, but I do think that their lineup is harder to play as of this particular moment. So what is Navi's answer? They are taking their sweet time with this one. Yeah, they're chilling. Uh, on the the same note, um, Puck is a fine matchup against OD in the mid lane. It's like it's it's perfectly playable, um, and they're going to go for the Pit Lord. So, lost for Doom. Uh, this is a pretty good Pit Lord game. OD is the only hero that you really care about uh, on on the Underlord, and you do have a lot of ways to 
stop the OD from hitting. Like you can go in and curse. Obviously, Zayek, when he hits six, you can just walk in and do. And there's coil. The silence stops from being able to cast orb. Um, yeah, I mean, I like Navi's lineup here. I'm always a fan of seeing Pit Lord. It's one of my favorite heroes. And Liquid, if they do get ahead, like if this PL is able to just play his game, farm it up with things like a Photic Shield and, and a fair amount of save on the side of Liquid, I can see him getting out of control. Uh, but that's what they need to happen. Right. Like that, that's in my my eyes, that's their win condition is Mickey has a really, really strong game. And they just play around the fact that there is a critical mass for this PL. He just has to get there. Okay. We'll see if they can get there. That's going to be the big thing to watch for. I, I will say that to me, it felt like Navi had two options with that last pick. You either go super duper early and take like a very push oriented hero, like a, you know, shadow shaman or something, you know, something like that. Um, you know, there's obviously problems with that, but maybe another other oriented hero, or they could pick another offlaner and go like more greedy. To me, at least it feels that way. And now I, in a way, I'd almost feel like I'd rather see the Navi draft play in the later game than uh, the liquid draft, just because they have a lot of heroes that scale up. Like Doom is going to be fat at some point this game, I think, if it goes late enough. Um, but you think that PL still can be the, the sort of be all end all big bad boy carry uh, if he gets the farm? I think so. I think PL is just that type of hero. Okay. Like the, if you have your timings really well uh, down and you have like your Manta Diffusal early enough and then you get to that heart, you know, that's the point where if you're far enough ahead and you have that heart, even if you get doomed, even if you're getting ran at, you know, and maybe it's uh, not hard this game because of Lysia, maybe it's another item. But the third item is where PL really just like becomes a terror. Some people like to go basher after the Manta Diffusal and just like Abyssal Blade and stuff. It's kind of, you know, dealer's choice in this game, but you get there and, you know, you'll start to realize why PL is so popular in pubs because it's just, it's not really an autoplay hero, but it feels extremely easy to like trick people with your illusions and whatnot nowadays. You know, you doppelganger, confuse them. Uh, he's in trouble though. And he's skilled Phantom Rush, so he's gonna take a lot of damage here. Damn. 500 damage or so there onto Mickey's face. Um, but yeah, they are going to, looks like set up in the tri-lane posture but probably going to leave afterwards i don't think that you want to tri-lane with a an underlord necessarily um uh, maybe they do though who knows it's 2020 you can do what you want to do i guess crystallize is kind of fine down here bottom against boxy it's trade off for runes are they going to be able to sneak one away insania steps forward and keeps the wyvern That's off that bounty do. rune and yeah it's just gonna be a trade off two for two Alright, so let's see. I mean, Liquid, they do have the heroes to like kind of stall the game. You know, they have the Shaker, they have the multiple saves, the Astral, the Aphotic Shield, and the Heal uh, coming in from Boxy, and then obviously stuff like Fissure, and hopefully eventually. Oh my god, Zayat, he comes Yo, back and it? snipes the Courier! Has been He's crazy. Oh, he saw that PL only had the one Tango and then figured he'd be sending out more regen. And then he just comes on over and hits the courier down. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the lanes from Liquid, they all kind of did the same thing, right? You pick up your two bounties, you immediately send out something with the courier. It's just like an efficiency thing. And yeah, yeah just a good call. Zayat drops down that ward, heads over towards mid, which is going to be hiding his courier for a moment. Does not want to get that one sniped away. Uh, and then if he wants to, Zayat can just come on back here and grab the, the next wave. Or he could snipe the next courier. Who knows? <laughs> Yeah, they do have that um, cliff ward, so if the courier walks too close to that tree line, they will be able to see it. I wonder if this is, like, Zayat's just sticking up here. I, I thought that he was going to pull the creep wave back behind the tower like we've seen over and over oh, again. Is he okay? Oh, jeez. That was real close. Was it like 10 HP there? Uh, now he's going to make that move. Okay. Yeah, this is um, this is perfectly fine for Pasha. You know, he's got his regen. Uh, they are gonna get the kill eventually on a crystal as they dove in there. He didn't start uh, with a healing cell, I guess. I think he went double tango, ring quelling. Okay. Uh, he's not gonna lose out really on any EXP, but they just lost both their courier. So oh God. What the hell is happening? Yeah, Zayek's courier died. Um, Ilias, his courier also died. I mean, this is good for Liquid. Like, making this kind of stuff happen, getting the extra income from the courier kills, getting the first blood onto the Lifestealer, which 
I don't really think that should have happened, but yeah. I'm guessing that because the Winter Wyvern started top and used the Arctic Burn, that Crystallize just let himself get hit too many times. Got like Fissure blocked and stuff by the Shaker and just beat down. So Liquid abusing the uh, the early game movement of Navi here. Speaking of getting hit too many times, Boxy with this Haster and is just punching away at that Wyvern there. And another Courier goes down. Crystallize gets Boxy's Courier because he was hitting that Wyvern so many times. There have been four Courier deaths, only one actual kill in this game. Just a whole lot of murder. It's Courier genocide. Dude, what is happening? Yeah, this is, um... It's a little bit bizarre, but the lanes have finally, at least for the side of Navi, kind of settled down. You know, the Wyvern's hanging out bot now. He's actually level 3 at before 3 minutes, which is really high level, actually, for a 5. He's even higher level than Pasha. His 3 position up here is kind of... He is getting tri lane to be fair, so it's hard for him to really be any XP range, but Liquid know how to deal with this hero. They tri lane him, they know that if Pasha doesn't have like that early game EXP, Glimpse is going to be there to cancel that teleport. Does have the TP, or rather the stick charges, but it's not going to keep him alive, and now is his TP used for that one too, so now in That's a hell cool. of a lot of trouble, and Zayat forced the TP away, they don't have another Glimpse here, so he will be able to escape, but no! Long TP and almost dies. He ends up dying back to the tier one. What in God's name? All right, they lose the Abaddon in the bottom lane also. Really weird decision making. Radiance middle tower. Yeah, the TP was a bit optimistic. I think he was hoping that the Disruptor skilled kinetic field and uh. not glimpse. I mean, that, that's really what you're hoping for, right? Like, yeah. Kinetic Field is very good at securing kills if the hero gets low enough, but if you do have a TP in your inventory, it means that the safe lane besides uh, Taiga, they don't have the stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. That It's going to be a hard game for this Underlord. I mean, I like the hero in the game, like, matchup-wise. I think it's it's good against everything but the, the OD. But if you don't have a game, it doesn't matter how good your hero is on paper. True enough. See Zayat there. He picks up the Mud Golem. I really like this uh, creep a lot for for Dooms in the early stages. Just like can get so much done with that Hurl Boulder long range initiation as Taiga comes in trying to steal away some of these creeps from Pasha, who is going to gladly trade hits. But this ward up here doing some pretty good work as he's waiting around and they do manage to get that D ward now. As they get ready for a battle of the bounties. Sania should be able to secure this one. We'll see if Navi can get the other side of the map. I mean, more than anything, Taiga is soaking EXP. Like, a lot of people look at this and it's like, yeah, you're contesting his CS and stuff, but keeping Pasha low level is really important. As soon as he gets to like five, that level three uh, Firestorm is going to kill the range creep for free. Uh, Zag doing a little bit of running away here. Oh god, Roshan's getting involved. <laughs> at least he didn't get bashed. If he got bashed, it would have been really problematic. I mean, this is still fairly problematic. They've got Glimpse mana. I think Zayat's just dead. As Taiga chases him down, does not have another Fissure. Still taking the punches. Very low armor hero. And needs another couple of hits. And that will be about curtains. Unless he can draw the aggro from the creeps. Looks like he wants to buy some more time here. He's still living. This guy's got the regen for days. But Fissure finally seals the deal. Yeah, he's giving him the world tour. Uh, bot lane box is going to be forced to TP back to base. He's level 5 though. Or sorry, he TP'd the tower. He didn't TP back home. He's got a salve in his backpack. He's going to swap in. Um, yeah, I mean, Liquid's early game is, is looking alright. Uh, the mid lane is pretty even. It's still like a 1 CS differential. Uh, PL and Lifestealer both getting their farm. Oh no. Yeah, everything. Not again. Pasha, Up not top. Again. Pasha getting caught. And chase down. Need a couple more hits. The TP moving in. The slow down. Doppelganger. They run away. Pasha lives. And now the chase forward. Trying to find Mikke. Zaya does not have any more abilities to throw out at him. But able to get that phase shift for Magical. And then one more punch. Finds the kill. Senya taking a lot of damage there. You see that crit, man? That's crazy. Damage. And they kill him off as well. Now Quakeva's still here. Magical sticking around. Zaya need to run away. But... Man, that freaking pack leader aura, it's good stuff. Yeah, that was a really nice turnaround there from Navi. I mean, even though Magical misses Coil, um, they still managed to get the PL and the Disruptor anyway. So that's good for them. Uh, Pasha now alive again. He's got his, uh, oh, he's, he has his box bottle. I don't think he realized when he was TPing that he gave it to him. Okay, there we go. He's going to give it back. Hmm. 
But yeah, this this guy just needs levels. That's that's Underlord's main thing. Um, the faster you can get level seven, the better, because then you can just start pushing waves out by yourself. You don't really need anyone's help to get the XP at that point. I got kind of enemy lines here. Well, they have a lot of other heroes in the area. Coil back up in two seconds. If they can get there, the chase is coming. He's thought about it, but. Well, still is gonna drop the coil. Okay, and now with the long duration silence, they find one kill, maybe gonna get another Underlord in the air at Quikva. Nowhere left to go, and Liquid are just kind of throwing away this nice little lead that they built up. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure what the thought was there. They're like coming to invade the jungle, I guess? I'm not sure. Yeah, especially considering they don't have like vision up that hill or anything. Like what's OD realistically going to contribute in that situation? The guy doesn't have boots. He's got like two nulls and a, a glow to haste. So even though OD's base movement speed is pretty good, it's not good enough to run away from getting coiled. So yeah, it's it's a bit odd. I mean, they are giving room to, to Mickey, and we did mention that he's kind of like the win condition for their, their team, that he is far enough ahead to where he can just play the fights and like burn everyone's mana. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be really annoying for the, the melee heroes like Life Stealer not being able to cast rage and stuff. Courier getting really low again, bottom. Foxy chase down. They've got him with the Infernal Blade, it looks like, is he is gonna be forced to pop his ultimate. Crystallize chases forward, Fissure. Crystallize able to beat him down. And with the Splinter Blast, they find that final kill. Taiga also going to die because Navi is not going to stop running at you. That is for damn certain. Very well played by them as they made that move down bottom and able to punish Foxy's overextension. You know, I, I want to go back again to that point that you were talking about where, you know, Magical missed the coil. It felt like there were a couple moments last game where he wasn't necessarily like playing the most clean puck performance ever, but it just feels like it's this hero, right? Like this hero is so strong and now they might end up losing the OD again. Like it just, it's so easy for him. That hero does so much work, and it's crazy that they've gotten it first phase both games. Yeah, I don't know. I I can understand thinking that people overvalue a hero. Like, right. you mentioned they don't prioritize it, but if you lose to it two games in a row in fairly convincing fashion, I think it's time to rethink your, your position. You know, Because I'm of the mind that Puck is really strong yeah. at the moment. Um, his new talents help him out. The, the cast range even is really nice at level 10. I, uh, Magical, I think, opted for the damage last game, but just getting that extra coil range, being able to move further with the Waning Rift, all this other stuff. Like, there's so many quality of life changes for this hero right. that kind of just put it over the top, in my opinion. In addition to coil always having been a great team fight utility and it also dealing instant damage again. So, everything about the hero is strong. We're going to see the oh, vanish here. It. Quick yeah. fingers. <laughs> So. I mean, it's actually just, I guess if they're on land, yeah, it is about who clicks faster, right? Yeah. Um, Dyer's middle tower is under attack. They get both. Yeah. You hate to see it. Is, is this going to be two games in a row where they get double outposted at 10 and 20 minutes? I don't know. It's it's looking a little bit rough here. Uh, again, you talk about it, though, the PL getting farmed, but you look at the next four, and it was Doom that was above the OD there for a moment. And I guess, it, you know... Uh, Maybe this all ends up changing, and in a couple weeks, people are like, oh, yeah, P Puck is actually trash. But right now, at, le at least, it feels like we haven't seen a great answer for it, and he has been controlling this game in a lot of ways. Um, well, if you think about it, the, the heroes that really shut down Puck are heroes with silences, which are not very prevalent at the moment. Yeah. Like, you don't see a lot of, you know, silencers, stuff like that. You don't see Nyx Assassin, who's another hero that's really good against Puck, because Nyx is, like, the worst hero in the game. I mean, there's just not a lot of things that are picked currently in the meta that, that really crush him. Like, Lion is another hero, you know, Blink Hex, Shadow Shaman, Blink Hex. Those are the types of things that, that really hurt Puck's gameplay. And none of those heroes are really being picked, so. Zayat. They're just going to chase down Taga here, and he will die, saving the Doom for that. So, Tier 1 Tower likely to fall. And... This is looking mighty, mighty good for Na'Vi at the moment. 2,000 gold lead. Granted, it is again with that caveat of a Phantom Lancer who has been able to get into the Yasha now. Looks like he's going to turn. Zayat's still here. He's running away. Got to be careful about this. If they bring in some more heroes, they drop the Doom. This is your carry. Can they catch him out, though, in time? I don't know if they're going to be able to. He's still moving rather quickly. And with Crystallize in the area, yeah, they're just not going to be able to find that kill on a PL. Liquid are coming in here. Chase, Static Storm down, but the DD Puck, 
even in the Static Storm, is out damaging this Disruptor combination as they chase him down next. They lose both the Earthshaker Disruptor on opposite sides of the map and now going to be able to force the rest of Liquid back. It feels like, to me, two games in a row that Liquid open up like with a pretty decent support combination. Like Obviously, Earthshaker and Disruptor are comfort picks for them. And then they, they pick a, a hero for Mickey that has like a pretty good matchup, but then they pick another farming hero for mid. Yeah. It actually just happens every single game. And every time I see Liquid do this, they, they just end up running into this problem where during the mid game, like these supports are being spread too thin. Like they have to protect the PL, they have to protect the OD. Like if they're not in the right position at, at the right time, every time, they're just like losing these heroes. Whereas, you know, Navi, they pick Puck because it's a pretty ambiguously strong laner. There's not too many matchups where you, you feel really miserable as a Puck. And since TA has been first phase banned, which is one of the worst matchups ever for Puck, you normally just kind of have that okay lane. And Puck doesn't need to crush it, just needs the lane to be good enough to hit six, then you start doing stuff on the map and you, you know, you help your team snowball the side lanes. Yeah. So, I don't know, I think it's just like Liquid's mentality of, of how they pick these heroes. I mean, obviously there's always gameplay involved. You can always play the game better. I'm not gonna, you know, ever argue that, but... It feels like they pick themselves into these situations where both their mid and their safe lane just want to hit creeps. True enough. Been wanting to see where this uh, mango tree is going to get dropped. As wherever it is, they need to be able to make sure that they can hit more creeps there. <laughs> so we'll see where they end up playing this one down. Uh, but that does feel like it's the name of the game now for the next couple of minutes. Is just sit back, absorb whatever you can, secure your jungle. You can see all these wards uh, by Liquid are placed very defensively try and protect these areas of the map where PL is wanting to feel safe. Um, and meanwhile, Na'Vi, they're getting some pretty decent aggressive vision down. Uh, so having ideas where Liquid are going to be playing. And we're getting close to the next round of Bounty Rooms. Looks like the ABBA is going to be able to be down bottom and securing those possibly. Although Na'Vi could just walk in and probably force Boxy back as well. Yeah, this... Uh... This ABBA is going to be fairly ineffective. And it's not really his fault. It's just because of the rest of his team. If your team can't fight and you're playing ABBA, all you can really do is show on side lanes and try to force heroes to TP to kill you. This is a nice timing for them if they can take down Zayat. He just ran out of his Devour, but instead just turns and dooms the Earthshaker. And now what was looking like it could have been a good gank setup is just another dead support for Liquid. And they're going to lose Insania as well. One by one, Liquid just keep on losing their supports. A again, not the end of the world as you're still getting farm on the cores, but at some point, got to make some kills happen. I just don't know how they're going to do it. Like, what is the... I mean, OD does a lot of damage. There's no disputing that. But he can't really walk in. Like, if the puck is off the map and you know that Coil's up and he gets Coiled, uh, he has to snap it, basically. He has to walk out, which means the ABBA has to be there. And if they're not, like, together as four, they're not taking an engagement. It's just not going to happen. Ooh. All right, they, they are deep here. We'll see what happens. Boxy. Oh, good fissure. Nicely played there to interrupt the chase down. So Boxy will live through that. But now Insania, he's in a bit too deep. Drops the Static Storm. That is maybe going to be a chance for them to kill this Doom. Astral, chase. Ah, but Magical jumps in. He finds the kill onto Insania, and they back away. So they... Still managed to sneak that kill, but it was a winner's curse forced out at the very least. But right now, this game is feeling all Navi. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just feeling the same vibes that I did from game one. You know, where Navi's draft just feels very straightforward and easy to play, and Liquid are the ones who have to basically do everything, but they just don't have the damage. Oh, a little bit of a misplay there. That's that okay. was not the real PL. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. The margin for error on Navi's lineup right now is massive. They yes. could mess up like five times, and I think, you know, the game would still be close at that point. Um, I'm trying to think if there's like anything else. Because like you you have this Abaddon offlane, right? Yes. What is, what is the purpose of this hero in this game? Like what does he accomplish besides maybe pressuring Crystallize in the lane? They did get the first blood on the Lifestealer, but after that point, what did he do? Like, who is he enabling in this game? Yeah, it, it 
I'm not sure. Oh no. Oh no. OD. Chase forward. Zayat thinking about going a bit further forward. They do have the Yule Scepter lift up. Doom onto Quakeva. The chase down. They have the Winter's Curse afterwards, which means they will be able to take both of these heroes out as Disruptor also is going to die. And it, like, there's just nothing that Liquid can do at all. They don't have an answer to anything. Yeah, they got no damage. They they did this thing where they have a so they have a three position that doesn't do any damage, and then they have a, a safe lane that needs farm, and then they have a mid lane that does damage but also needs farm. And I I don't know how you're supposed to play these lineups. Like I feel like they're so hard to execute. Yeah. Like sure you have a disruptor and a shaker, but you know because this disruptor is maxing glimpse, he doesn't even have like multiple points into thunderstrike. So it's not even like the the disruptor build that you you normally see where this guy does some good DPS. Uh, oh, no, and another round they got him caught. Insania, just in the grave again. Boxy trying to escape from Zayat. This is your position four doom. That's a level ahead Boxy and same level as Koikva. He has had a monster impact in this game. It, 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 the thing to me that's crazy about it is that, yes, that like they had a game that looked like this yesterday, but they also had a couple games where they were able to come back and look really solid. So it just doesn't feel like the same liquid that we saw yesterday. As Quakefa has a haste rune, oftentimes we've seen these bait people into bad positions, and it's going to be another time done as Quakefa just dies in his own jungle underneath the ward. Oof. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think they spread themselves too thin. Like, they, they make it so hard on themselves with these types of heroes. They're going to find Crystallize here. Oh, no, the kinetic field misses. And he gets the rage before the echo. Oh, Jesus. Jeez. Oh, oh, God. They oh. can't get a break, man. But it, it's their heroes, like, honestly. I would say that game one was a draft win, and a game two might honestly just even be a draft win as well. I mean, they, there's still stuff, you know, that they can do. The PL is still the highest net worth. He's working his way towards the Fusal Blade. If that timing hits, and it hits well, and they're able to take a couple of engagements, you know, I could I could see them turning the game, but if, if things keep going as they are right now, uh, we're going to see probably another, like, 35-minute throw -in. Yeah. Well, and now it's Nobby's turn to head on into the Roche Pit. You talked about Lifestealer going for that Mjolnir. He already has the Maelstrom done with the Heaven's Halberd. So OD is just like out of the game, I, I think. He's been trying to work on this Aghanim Scepter. I want to see what like his item progression timeline is looking like at the end of this game. Because he just, I mean, they need to make space for one of the cores and PL is their win condition. So that's what's been going on for poor old Quakeva. Yeah, for, for Liquid, it seems like their MO is they, they put a lot of pressure on themselves from the four and the five position. And then two games in a row, their three basically can't even play Dota. And then their, their one is farming well still. But because of that, and no one else like being a playmaker means that their mid player is always going to suffer too. Because if your mid's not a playmaker, and your, your PL's soaking up your side of the map because he has to, then what does Quakefa do? Like, yeah. well, what's what's he going to do when the, his mid player needs you know his side of the map? And I mean, is doing what he can to play aggressive and like not farm his own jungle, because it's really hard for OD to side lane compared to a PL. But man, it's... I don't know. I, I don't know what they were hoping to accomplish with these heroes. Is under attack. Well, they got a pretty good item there for the PL as Zayat is going to be pulled back in but able to escape afterwards. And now maybe it's a chance to turn this back around. He's got a Blink Dagger. They've got a big tasty treat inside of this puck. They solo coil the Disruptor and just going to take him down as Boxy next is on the menu. They're going to chase down this ABBA, kill him off afterwards, and one by one by one, all of Liquid fall down. Back to the drawing board, boys. Different approach next time. Yeah. I think that's that's pretty much all I can think of. Well, if Liquid do not win this game, they'll have at least one more game, but that could potentially be it if they're not able to win this next game here that we're playing because they would drop down to the lower bracket best of ones. We will see how that ends up working. Oh, excuse me. No, 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 no. No, they wouldn't. I'm dumb. They, they still have another series afterwards. They have to play a game later on today. That's the next okay. game that we're talking about. <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't completely sure. You know, I yeah. just. I always assume that you're the smart one here, so I'm just. Uh, <laughs> it's a terrible I'm assumption. Just along, I'm along for the ride. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see how this ends up going. Um, Twenty-two minutes, twenty-one to four, and we will see where they decide to go next. Uh, again, we talked about it. Diffusal blade for PL. It is done at this stage. He. Looks like he wants to go towards a heart next. Also has an Imp Claw. Uh, and I was mentioning that like they had gotten the Vam Brace on Lifesteal, which to me feels like not quite as good as an Imp Claw this game. So that's something going their way. I mean, it's more about... The Imp Claw for the PL is bigger, like no doubt, because right. he, he needs the damage. He wants to go into the fights, you know, kill the Wyvern, uh, manage rain the PL, maybe kill the, the Doom if you're, you know, really, really lucky. Uh, but he, God, his team just can't, like, oh, his team is so helpless, like, without him there. It's it's really a struggle to be in this type of position as a one, where you're looking at it and you're going, my team can make actually zero plays. Like, I, I have to do almost everything. I guess Taiga does have a blink, so that that's, like, a, a really big, uh, big thing here for Liquid. They got the smoke in his inventory right now, so if they want to go for that, that sort of play, this is a, a decent timing. They certainly do enough damage to get kills. That's never really been an issue. It's more about how do the fights start? Like you, you get a fissure and then maybe hope that the, the static storm is enough to kill a hero. But honestly, a lot of the time, no one's in position to follow it. Like oh, it's no. Usually just, oh no. Oh no. Oh, Mickey Chase wants to run. Oh, Manta dodges the doom. God, that would have been so tragic. Everybody else TP'd away. Now all of Liquid is running to try and help him out. Can they make this work though? They're going to be able to find that doom onto the PL. They've used it already. Crystallized chasing the coil there on to three. Static Storm, they just want to keep him alive. They have two Astrals, though. This could maybe work out for them, but they're going to turn now on a Quake, but this isn't the way that they wanted the fight to start, but it could still work for Liquid if they can manage to get out, but they're not going to get out with everybody. They're going to lose Quake, but big Echo Slam. Is it going to be enough? Winter Wyvern Curse already onto that Earthshaker, chasing for more, but they lose Mickey. He buys back immediately. They need to take down Liquid here, or rather Navi here, if they want to make a chance at this game work at all, but Navi just back out again. There's gonna be the glimpse, trying to hold on if at all possible and see if they can force the fight onto Crystallize, but they might have bitten off more that they can chew as they chase forward again. The Mjolnir charges going out every which way. Mickey chase, Mickey dead, that's a dieback. And with that, it looks like it's gonna be a set of racks, if not more. I mean, if the other one was live, the whole base would be dead. Like, Jeez. I hear I would have had so much damage from the atrophy permanent damage of Pasha's mad. He's like, dude, I wanted that damage. Hook me up, dude. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this has been a massacre of the series. Navi has played it very well. I, I like their drafts a lot. They always have a hero that can make stuff happen. Yeah. Do not thank. Uh, we are going to see a further chase forward. Crystallize beating into Taiga. The duration of the rage they are going to save him. Using those Astrals, the Aghanim Scepter, which was completed on the OD, but it's only a small retribution because they still don't have their PL for 40 seconds. I mean, God, how tragic is that? You get, like, all of the items, the huge timing that you want, and then everybody TPs away, and it's like your PL just left alone top. Oh, couldn't have gone any worse for them. Yeah, the being highest net worth and then diebacking and then all of a sudden being below both the enemy cores, that's a... Uh, that's a really, really big problem. Yeah. I mean, I don't really think there's much else to say. It's kind of just like Liquid's lineup really does not want to play from behind, like at any point in the game. And sure. unfortunately, they, they just can't seem to, to win the lanes. Like every game, you know, they got double outposted at 10 minutes and then 20 minutes. And then this game, I can't remember if they got a 20 minute one. Um, but they did get double outposted at 10, quite by getting jumped here. Yeah, there were bigger issues than just the outposts in this one that were going on at that point in the game. But the BKB out for the position for. Zayats, who's hanging on to the Doom. He's not even going to need to use it on Quakefoot if he doesn't want to. Foxy is going to die. Magical jumps in, finds the kill with his puck. They're not even deciding to buy back as of yet because it is too difficult to try and find a kill. Now they're going to bring back in that OD. He does have Sanity's Eclipse back up in three seconds. If he can make something happen, try and build up some of these charges. But he keeps on having to use them all defensively to save his other cores. So 
He's not even getting the benefit of that. They lose the PL. Now they're going to lose the OD. GG is called as Taiga valiantly tries to increase their kill percentage, but it is not going to work. 33-6, to six, a beatdown in our first series of the day. Yeah. If I'm Liquid, I'm, I'm going back to the, the drafts and going, okay, where did they go wrong? Because I didn't really mind their openers so much. But I really think they have to start straying away from this, you know, pick two heroes that need a lot of creeps from the one and the two position. Right. And then for some reason, they just have this three out of like two, both games. Like, I'm, I'm not trying to like rag on Boxy or anything. I feel like he was put in a position where it was nearly impossible for him to succeed. Yeah. Like he, he's playing this solo Phoenix um, for a little while in the top lane and he's playing into a puck. And the guy just can't even get an ult off the entire game. I think we saw like two total eights in this game. He's playing an ABBA who, you know, most of the time, really all he wants to do when you're playing three is just sit in the side lane. He doesn't really want to go to fights that often. I mean, sure, he'll TP here and there if it, if it looks like a good engagement, but he kind of just wants to occupy that space so, you know, other people can make stuff happen on the map. But he had no one to play with this game. Like, just no one. Like, Mickey yeah. is never going to be in the same spot as him. Quick is never going to be in the same spot as him. And even with a Disruptor and a Shaker, there's not enough damage to really kill these heroes. Like, it's a Pit Lord, a Doom, a Life Stealer, a Puck. Like, who do they ever really kill with those three heroes? And even if they do kill that hero, it's pretty much going to just be the, the Pit Lord, right? Or maybe Zayek. And even he got, you know, away from a couple of the ganks that Insania and, uh, and Taiga actually did. So, I don't know. It, it felt like they really couldn't catch a break in this series. I, I think a lot of it, again, is just the way that they've drafted. So, hopefully, you know, you said they get to play again later today. Hopefully, they, they bring a new idea to the table here because this one definitely did not work. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to have to wait and see on that one. That will be our final series of the day where Liquid will get a chance to avenge themselves, although it won't be against Navi. It's going to be against the winner of our next match, which should be pretty solid. It's going to be EG versus Pain. Some good old NA versus NA matchup coming up in just a bit. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll be back in a few minutes with our next series of the day, EG versus Pain. See you guys then.